Blog Talk Radio. November 19th, 2013, we are going to be talking about the NHL regular season to the first quarter. Today I'm here with Nate Monza from Inside Wrestling. Welcome, Nate. How's it going, man? Uh, I'm doing pretty good as uh, we have a great show today. Before we get started, the number to the show is 646-716-5733. Once mm-hmm. again, 646-716-5733. The email to the show is skbtradio.gmail.com. You can tweet the show by putting in hashtag Sports Kingdom Live. We are officially nine days away from launching SK's brand new website. Once again, the site will feature multimedia events, blogging, forums, store items, and much more content. Um, should be exciting as uh, I'll post a link onto our uh, Facebook and Twitter page. You can find us on Facebook by going to www. Facebook.com forward slash sports cam BTR. You can find us on Twitter at sports two underscores kingdom. All I have to do is put in this, uh, go to the search toolbar on Twitter and type in sports two underscores kingdom. So, uh, uh, a lot of exciting things coming up as, uh, today we are going to begin the show by talking about the biggest story. The, big, the biggest story to the first quarter of the NHL regular season. Although the Tampa Bay Lightning are in first place of the Eastern Conference, um, even Samkos recently went down with a broken leg injury, which is going to cost uh, himself and the entire team the rest of the season, which leads me to ask you, Nate, but um, how costly is this injury to the Tampa Bay Lightning Oh, right it's, I mean, it's a it's a big loss for him. I mean, he's the main guy for the the offense for uh, Tampa Bay. So, I mean, I think Tampa Bay, it's going to be hard for Tampa to tread water and, and hold that first-place lead. I think Boston is going to pounce on him, and especially with uh, Tuka Rask. His, his goals against is ridiculous. He's, he's right up there in, as, in the leaders for the NHL this season. So, uh, yeah, I think Boston is going to overtake Tampa Bay. And um, you just want to, you know, all this Tampa Bay's got to do is to try to find ways to win some games to stay up there, you know, not in the top spot, but, you know, in the top four or five or something, just to get into the playoffs until Stamkos can't return all along. He's going to be out. If it's going to be four months, six months, or whatever. But, yeah, I mean, it's a big loss for him, but, and I see Boston just overtaking that Atlantic uh, division. Yeah, most definitely, although I'm not I'm not too, too uh, worried about the Tampa Bay Lightning at all. Um as far as uh, the playoffs are concerned, I, I believe uh, they'll do just fine um, making the playoffs as long as um, Coppola and uh, Ben Bishop uh, keeps on stepping up. Uh, ben, ben Bishop uh, has been starting off the season very well, uh, one of the best goaltenders. Um, I believe right now in the NHL, and as long as uh, Bishop and uh, and the whole rest of the team can uh, can can continue this uh, pace of consistency, I believe uh, they'll do just fine and make the playoffs. But uh, in other news, Rick Nash is supposed to return to the Rangers lineup, I believe, later on tonight. Um, 
the Rangers have been struggling on offense lately, um, even though uh, Henrik Lundqvist and Cam Talbot have been doing pretty well in goal. Uh, the offense has been struggling. I have to ask you, Nate, but uh, will will Rick Nash provide that boost to uh, this Rangers offense? I mean, yeah, I mean, it's good to have him back in the lineup, but, I mean, he might provide some little bit of offense for the Rangers, but I don't see them anyway overtaking Washington or Pittsburgh, you know. It, it seems like that's the Rangers' problem. That they're good on defense, you know, and they got a good goalie and all that. But, I mean, offensive-wise, it seems like they just can't find ways to score a goal. So, I mean, yeah, he'll provide a little bit of a boost, a little bit of jolt for the Rangers, but no way I don't think they're going to overtake Washington or Pittsburgh. It's basically a two-team race, I think, in that Metropolitan Division. I think it's Pittsburgh or Washington's division to win. And the other teams in the Metropolitan Division, I don't really see making any kind of strong move to overtake Pittsburgh or Washington. So it's basically a two-team race, I think, for the rest of the season. Yeah, but wouldn't you figure uh, the Pittsburgh Penguins on top of the Eastern Conference right now with the talent they have? I mean, uh, they have a uh, they have a uh, oh yeah they have a boatload of talent and and uh, uh, you know when when uh, when uh, time ticks down towards uh, the end of the season, uh, the the Pittsburgh Penguins front office is going to have to start cutting. Uh, some players all due to uh, salary, which is why I say they have a they have a boatload of talent that can uh, that can uh, that can make sure this Penguins team is in first place in the Eastern Conference. Many years now, people have rated the Pittsburgh Pittsburgh Penguins as as one of the best in the Eastern Conference. Yeah, they're four fourteen eight, but they can do better. Oh yeah, I mean uh, most definitely they can they can do better, but I mean like I said, I think I think they'll find a way to win that top spot in, in their division, and then it, 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 the the whole thing about NHL hockey, as long as you get into the playoffs, anything can happen. I mean home ice in, in, is great and all that, but I mean you got to find ways to win on the road anyways. I mean like Chicago, they won the Stanley Cup on the road twice, in 2010, 2013. So uh, no, I mean you got to find you just got to find ways to get in the playoffs because anything can happen in the playoffs. You can get a goalie that can stand on his head, carry a team. You can get a power play that's been struggling all summer, catch on, light on fire in the playoffs. So it's just finding ways to get in there. And, and Pittsburgh's going to be up there. So, I mean, if they win the division, that's fine. If they're the first seed or the second seed in the playoffs, I think it really it doesn't really matter because I think Pittsburgh can find ways to win on the road. So. Yeah, most definitely. And uh, Sidney Crosby, once again, having a marvelous season, uh, one of the leading scorers. So, I will have to wait and see. But in the meantime, though, uh, Nate, you did mention your Chicago Blackhawks. Um, it, it looks as if uh, uh, they're off to a solid start. They're they're not not off to a first quarter hangover, but uh, they're off to a solid start. Um, one one uh, player to uh, to bring up, but uh, uh, Nikola. Or yeah, Nikolai uh, Kobe Bowen has a 811 save percentage, and uh, has has uh, ha- has had to do with some of Chicago's losses. So I have to ask you, Nate, but uh, should should uh, Chicago cut the wire very soon with Kobe Bowen? Yeah, I guess he got injured uh, Saturday, so they brought up their goalie from uh, Rockford. Yeah, I can't stand seeing this guy in goal. Anytime he's in that, I don't even want to watch any of the games. But, I mean, you can't really blame all the time the goalie. Sometimes the defense, Chicago's defense has been really struggling, and they're losing a lot of face off, especially off, like, on the penalties or, like, um, icing call. So they got to try to win more on the face off dots and uh, tie it up a little bit uh, on the defense. Um, it's nice to see Christopher Steak, uh come back to the team, but... Uh, no, I mean, Chicago will be okay, but they need a backup goal. You can't just put it all on uh, Crawford and net. I mean, you got to save this guy for the playoffs, so you can't burn him out. But, I mean, this guy's tightening up on defense and uh, not allowing a lot of shots for Crawford to get some shot blockers up there. So, But, I mean, Chicago will be up there. I mean, their offense is awesome. I mean, they're number one in the Western Conference for goals four. So, I mean, they'll be up there offensive-wise. But, I mean, defensive-wise, they got to get a little bit stronger and 
Um, as for a uh, happy bowling, yeah, I don't really don't want to see him in net. Um, I don't know if this guy from Rockford can do anything, but yeah, he's got to give him a shot. You got to give Crawford some rest, especially with these back-to-back games, you know, coming up in the season. And I know Crawford probably wants to play for Team Canada, but if I, if I was him, I would sit it out. I know you want to play for your country and all, but I would take those two weeks and rest up, especially if they're struggling uh, with a backup goalie issue. Yeah, and you know what? There are many out on the market um, during the off season. And out of all the guys, out of all the guys, the Chicago Blackhawks decided to bring in Cobby Bowen. Don't understand, but uh, <laughs> but yeah. Other than that, the Chicago Blackhawks are off to a fine start, and uh, I foresee them going uh, going a long way, indeed. So. Um, Let's talk about a team that's been uh, very surprising, the Phoenix Coyotes. The Phoenix Coyotes were one of the worst teams last year in the NHL, um, similar to uh, the Colorado Avalanche. Uh, We, in fact, got to talk about the Colorado Avalanche on one of our previous shows. You can go back and uh, listen to uh, me and Nate talk about the Colorado Avalanche's fine start, but... um, but the Phoenix Coyotes uh, have been a very surprising team. Mike Smith uh, has has been very, very good in goal, and I and I think uh, the Phoenix Coyotes front office made a great decision in re-signing him over the off season. And meanwhile, they have um, probably one of the best uh, uh, blue lines in the NHL, and and and. Uh, with the way uh, Dave Tibbetts' team is playing, Nate, I got to ask you: um, How surprised are you by uh, uh, the Coyotes' good start? Ah, uh, man, I was watching uh, that Chicago uh, Phoenix game the other night, and I mean, Mike Smith—he was standing on his head. That game should have been a blowout, but uh, no, I'm not. I'm not surprised. I mean, this this team. They they play great against Chicago. I mean, they're finding ways to score goals. They're finding ways to stay in the games. I mean, uh, Martin Hansel, he's 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 doing good. Uh, Robata's doing good. Shane Doan. I mean, they got a lot of talented players. Mike Ribeiro, uh, Keith Yandel. I mean, they got they got a cast of characters on that team. And yeah, this team. I don't know. They always almost leaving the city, file bankruptcy, move out of the city, and all of a sudden they start getting hot. It's like we're we're gonna threaten to leave, but all of a sudden the, the team starts waking up and. Fans start tuning in, but no, this, this team does not. To me, it doesn't seem like that big of a surprise. I mean, I think the team can go a long way, and um, yeah, I think they can try to. I don't know if they can try to uh, grab the top spot. It's going to be hard. The Ducks are starting to wake up, but they lost, you know, four games in a row. And San Jose is going to be up there too. So, but I mean, yeah, they're. Gonna, I think the Phoenix will be in the mix of it in that Pacific Division and in the overall playoffs for the Western Conference. Yeah, most definitely. I think I think the reason why Phoenix is off to a fine start is because of their front office. I think the front office did a wonderful job over the off season of uh turning things around. I think I think now uh you get a you get a better picture of what what Phoenix is all about. Um well, I uh I mentioned before Mike Smith uh, a very fine job could possibly uh, uh, start for Team Canada. Who knows? But uh, he's off to a very good start. Um, you know, you know uh, Nate. Uh, this time of year really matters to NHL players because uh, because of uh, the Winter Olympics. Um, the w- Winter Olympics. I mean, between now and the Winter Olympics, are going to determine. Uh, where some of these players uh, stack up. Yeah, I mean, especially if they want to play for their country for the Olympics. But, I mean, like I was saying for uh, uh, Joe, uh, Crawford, uh, Corey Crawford, uh, if I was him, especially with their backup issue, I know he wants to play for uh, goaltending for Team Canada. I would I would just sit it out and see what they can, they can run with uh, Team Canada because they'll probably have a lot of great players on that team and just, just to get some rest. I think some players might try to get some rest instead of playing in the Olympics. I mean, it's good to play for your country, but, I mean, 
it's the NHL. It's a long stretch. It's a, it's a long, hard season. It's not like last year where there's only a race to 48. So, I mean, some players I would, if I, if I could, just sit out and take a little break and uh, heal up some injuries because you got to make that final stretch run for the playoffs and stuff. So, I mean, I don't know. Country over team. I don't know. You don't really get paid for the Olympics. You get paid by your team. So I, I would play for the paycheck. So that's me. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, if you want to call into the show today, the number to the show six four six seven one six five seven three three. Once again, six four six seven one six five seven three three. If you want to talk about the first quarter to the NHL regular season. Now, uh, I want to talk about uh, the team with the best winning percentage and the team with the best power play percentage, uh, which are the St. Louis Blues. The St. Louis Blues uh, uh, are, are doing are doing fantastic, and, and uh, you know, I, I predicted this team um, during uh, the NHL season preview show to reach the NHL Stanley Cup. Um, I said it then. I must say it again. I believe this is St. Louis. This is the year St. Louis reaches the AHL Stanley Cup. Alexander Steen uh, is the leader in goals, and meanwhile, uh, Alex Pedrangelo, uh, possibly the best defender going right now in the AHL. Um, Ken Hitchcock has a fan- fantastic squad right now in, in St. Louis, and uh, I have to ask you, Nate, but um, are, are the St. Louis Blues uh, a Stanley Cup contender by the way they're playing right now? Oh, most most definitely. I mean, you just wonder if they hopefully they don't fall into like category of like the Washington Capitals, a team that's hot during the whole season, and they get in the playoffs, and then they just can't find their way. But, no, I think this team – is uh, really a, a team to beat. I mean, Chicago and St. Louis are going to be up there, but I think overall, I think St. Louis is overall a better team because, I mean, they got uh, two good goalies, uh, Elliott and uh, Halak. And also they got, you know, offensively, they got, you know, Steen, Backus, Oshie. I mean, the list goes on and on with that team. And No, nah, this team's going to be up there, and I wouldn't be surprised if they pass out. Chicago, especially if Chicago struggling on the defensive side and the backup goalie issues. So, but no, St. Louis is I think is the real deal. I think this season. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, this team is better than last year, and and they're they're playing they're playing that way. Uh, I believe St. Louis can once again reach uh, the Stanley Cup final. So. Um. Uh, let's talk about uh, Jonathan Quick. Jonathan Quick recently went down with a groin injury. Now, Ben Scrivens has stepped in the goal. Um, the the Los Angeles Kings have now won three three games in a row. And I, I have to ask I have to ask you, Nate. But uh, um, how how essential has uh, ben Scrivens in the Los Angeles Kings when the Los Angeles Kings really don't have much of a um, good offense. No, I mean it's it's good for him. He, he, I'm just looking at his stats. He's played eight games, four and one. He's got a 1.24 goals against. So I mean, hopefully that defense in front of him can you know play, block a lot of shots from him. Uh, don't commit too many penalties. Don't give the teams all. Because this guy, this guy's gonna be taking the workload a while. Quick's gone. I don't know how long he's gonna be out for, but no, it's it's nice to see that the backups. Actually, there's a a decent backup and uh, for a team, you always have. It's always good to have a decent backup in in net. So yeah, just find their way, uh, score some goals for the, for the guy, and I think Los Angeles will be okay. Is just trying to find that offense that LA might struggle on. But no, it's it's, it's good to see that he's performing. And he's right up there with the top goalies. Uh, this season, but I mean, only played eight games, but still not not too bad, and filling in for quick. Yeah, not too bad at all. I'm not sure uh, how uh, Jonathan Quick is going to come back from that groin injury. Might look a little different goal, but uh, other than that, Ben uh, is doing fantastic, and uh, and uh, he's been really essential 
he's been really essential. I don't think uh, uh, the Kings have much help on offense. Uh, I think we could see more out of uh, Dustin Brown, Jeff Carter, and all those other guys. So, uh, um, uh, it's good to have a backup goal, like you said, in, in goals. So, um, uh, all right, uh, let's talk about uh, the Washington Capitals. The Washington Capitals um, are not off to the start they did last year. The start they had last year was um, was awful. Uh, they were in last place uh, or last place of the NHL Eastern Conference, and now are off to a steady start. Um, Alex Ovechkin once again proving why uh, he won the Hart Trophy last year. Uh, the team is doing pretty well all around. Like I said, pretty pretty steady so far their record. But um, but Nate, uh, how would you assess uh, the Washington Capitals? I mean, offensive wise, um, they're great. I mean, they got a lot of firepower on that team. Uh, Goaltending wise. Uh, Okay, Holpe's got a 2.62 goals against average. So, I mean, they're going to have the firepower, but, I mean, they can't play like Texas Ranger baseball, score 10 runs and give up nine. I mean, they can't, you know, go these 5-4 games, these 6-5 games and stuff like that. It, it's going to it's gonna bite them in the ass, especially in the playoffs, where you face the better defensive team. So they got to, you know, they got to secure more on the defensive side and goaltending side or something and, and provide a little bit more defense for their their goaltending. If they could do that, they'll, they'll definitely be up there. I mean, because offensive-wise, uh, Washington's uh, very good in, in the league. Yeah, most definitely. Um, like I said, at least they're not off to the start they had last year, which was very disappointing. Uh, Nate, if you had to name uh, the most disappointing team so far right right now in the 2013-2014 NHL regular season, who would it be? Um, lately, I, I would say Detroit. I mean, they lost six games in a row, and they're they're finding ways to lose games. Um, looking back, they lost uh, the last six games. Uh, let me see. Uh, I think it was all shootouts, one goal games. I I thought they were going to be a, a, a better team. Yeah, five four loss a shootout, uh, another shootout, another shootout, overtime and overtime, and then a four two loss in Winnipeg. So going back to the last six games. Um, yeah, I think the uh, Detroit. Uh, Red Wings are a little bit of a dis- disappointment for me. Uh, I thought they were going to be a team to be right up there in the in the top in the East, but eh, they can find ways. As long as they can find ways to win games, they'll they'll be right back up there and compete with Boston, I think, and uh, Tampa Bay. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, Detroit, uh, we we uh, touted as a Stanley Cup contender before the season, and uh, right now they have a nine five and seven record. They, they in fact have seven draws, uh, uh, a lot, of, a lot of draws um, to start off the season. But uh, you know, like you said, they uh, they could most likely uh, rebound, rebound, and uh, reach the playoffs. Uh, I don't see Detroit not making the playoffs at all. I see them uh, reaching the playoffs and. Uh, Possibly going far uh, as they did last year, and uh, they they are uh, most definitely a threat to uh, the Chicago Blackhawks. You would have to agree. Oh yeah, well if they made up in the Stanley Cup, yeah, I mean because they're not in the same division anymore in the, in the same conference, but yeah, I mean as for uh, I'm thinking of for a surprise team so far, uh, Minnesota. They're starting to wake up. Uh, I don't know if they can get enough offense going, but Minnesota on that goals against, 44 goals against, so that's what's second in the Western Conference. So, uh, no, I mean, I think I, for a surprise team so far, I think uh, Minnesota will be good. But, you know, Detroit, Detroit's going to be – they'll find ways to win. I mean, they got a good coaching staff. So, uh, no, I'm not I'm – not, don't worry about Detroit. They'll be okay. Yeah, um... You were just mentioning the Minnesota Wild, but uh, how how about uh, the Wild? Uh, Josh Harding uh, putting putting on uh, one of the best seasons out of uh, goaltenders 
And then uh, you have uh, Brian Suter and Zach Parise, two of your biggest stars uh, that that the Wild picked up picked up from uh, last year's off season. Uh, I think they they have finally, or they are now finally uh, uh, fitting in to uh, Minnesota. They're they're getting uh, comfortable there, and I think. Uh, I think with the weather plan right now, uh, they they could uh, possibly uh, be a top seed out in the Western Conference by the time this this season's over. Oh, uh, well, yeah, most yeah, definitely. But it's like I said, <clears throat> the only thing they're worried about is just just getting enough goals uh, for the team. If they can get if they can find ways to score at least an average of like three goals a game, I think they'll be okay. Because I mean, goaltending it's great, but you know, barring any in- injuries. Uh, no, Minnesota, I think, will be very uh, competitive. It just, uh, you know, they don't want to get in shootouts with uh, high-scoring teams because they ain't, they ain't going to win. I mean, you got, like, you know, Anaheim, Chicago, uh, San Jose, uh, Phoenix. Those are high-scoring teams. Uh, you don't want to get in shootouts with them because uh, they're not known for scoring a lot of goals in Minnesota. So, uh, barring that, I mean, as long as they don't get any shootouts or uh, uh, games, uh, I think Minnesota will be okay because, I mean, goaltending-wise, defensive-wise, they're, they're v- very good. Yeah, most definitely. So, um, we have uh, some time left on the show, so I figured we could talk a little bit about uh, your favorite thing, Nate, uh, Monday Night Raw from last night. Uh, how would you uh, um, analyze uh, Biggie Langston's Intercontinental Championship win last night over Curtis Axel? Uh, no, it was a great win. Um, I'm glad he's got a baby face push. Uh you know, Curtis Axel wasn't really doing much with the belt. It's basically it's a lost title. So, given the Big E, I'm, I'm happy for him. It's the only thing is, uh, who is he going to feud with? I mean, I don't see anyone really feuding with Big E Langston for that title. I mean, maybe Damien Sandow. I mean, I don't know. I'm just trying to find opponents for Big E Langston. Uh, Ryback? I don't want to see Ryback fighting anybody. So, I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, who do you see feuding with Big E? I mean, guy from NXT or something to bring it up? I don't know. So it's just finding opponents for the guy. I think that's the only problem. I think. I, I don't know, but uh, uh, what about Ryback? Uh, it seems uh, it seems like he's being underutilized in, in WWE, and uh, he he's he's been you know falling falling down. Uh, he's been falling down ever since uh, he turned heel against John Cena. Uh, he'll don't worry. Ryback will get his at uh, Royal Rumble. Um, Goldberg's gonna make sure of that. So don't worry. Goldberg's coming back at Royal Rumble to, to throw out that piece of crap uh, right back out the ring and set up for WrestleMania 30. So ah, uh, he he just sucks, Ryback. <laughs> he sucks. Yeah. Well, but, I mean, what a, did you see the main event? And what a way to end the show. I mean, Rey Mysterio coming back, a uh, hot. Six on six match. I mean, wow, a good way to end a uh, end of show uh, for uh, Monday Night Raw. Yeah, but uh, um, he was he was actually limping. He was, he was actually limping. <laughs> oh, um, he's, he's hurt again. <laughs> 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 it's been car apart too. Some guy some guy posted something really funny on uh, Facebook about like yeah after the match Mysterio will be out. He was injured. He was helped by the back by Sin Cara, and they both got injured or something. I was just reading it. It was just, it was just a gag thing, but I'm like, wow. Don't tell me Mysterio got hurt again. I mean, wow. They, maybe maybe Sin Cara and Rey Mysterio should team up and call like Los uh, Dis- Disables or something. <laughs> Disable List or something. They should make a team. <laughs> La <Bacha. laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Oh man, I I feel bad for Mysterio. He's one of the all time greats, but I think it's time for him to just pack it in and uh, retire yeah. if he's getting yeah. injured again. Yeah, I I just think it's it's enough with uh, Ray. He he's had a good career. Maybe he could uh, have that one last match at maybe like WrestleMania or something, but. Um, the guy from uh, ESPN, Flores, uh, the uh, broadcaster, he, he said he did a hurricane off the couch uh, when um, Mysterio came back. I said, wow, that's a mark-out moment, hurricane off the couch. 
I wonder if he did it better than John Cena. Well, it wouldn't be that hard, too. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, um, uh, Nate, you want to promote your show uh, before we go? Yeah, I'm going to do a show uh, this Sunday, probably 11 o'clock, uh, the post uh, Survivor Series pay per view uh, rundown. I'm not really too excited for this card, but. I'm going to check out the pay-per-view probably at my buddy's house, and uh, I'll do a post-pay-per-view uh, show at 11, maybe 11.30 on Sunday. So just just check it out on Blog Talk Radio, uh, Inside Wrestling. Uh, just check it out. And also I was doing a, uh, a, a Dream WrestleMania 30 card. If you send uh, your Dream card to uh, Inside Wrestling 78 yahoocom I'm going to pick the winner, and they're going to get two tickets to uh, WrestleMania 30 in uh, Louisiana Superdome. So to thank all the people that listen to my show. So I'm going to give a winner two tickets to uh, WrestleMania 30 for the best dream WrestleMania card. So just make a card and send it to me. All right, great. So uh, catch Inside Wrestling at uh, 11.30 after the Survivor Series pay-per-view on Sunday. Um, once again, uh, uh, thank you for uh, joining the show, Nate, and uh, thank you to our listeners for uh listening to the show today. You can re-listen to this episode on iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, and Blog Talk Radio. Uh, once again, we are nine days away from officially launching SK's brand new website. The website will feature multimedia events, blogging, forum, forums, forums, and much more content. I've been your host, Julian Brown of the King, and I want to once again uh, thank you and uh, and uh, tell all of our listeners to enjoy the rest of their night. Later, and peace out.